Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting sunset snowman hugs <laughs> and I'm sipping on some hot cocoa. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painted along with me, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, Mars black, ultramarine blue, deep yellow, fire red, and fluorescent orange. And of course, you can switch those colors up if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. And I have a number two round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you could download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna draw an outline for our landscape. I'm gonna be using my pencil. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that is comfortable to you, but I'm gonna use my pencil. I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers. We're gonna connect those markers and we'll have something that's nice and simple for us to paint in in a future step. So I'm gonna be separating my sky from my distant hills to my foreground land. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find myself about halfway up or down the left hand side and then I'm going to go up about an inch, inch and a half from there. I'm going to give myself my first marker and then on the right hand side I'm going to find myself about halfway up or down the, the canvas and I'm going to come about two inches above that, so somewhere in through here. I'm going to connect these two with a roly-poly line but I am going to be having my sun rise or sunset in this vicinity so I'm going to have my land kind of dipping down where I have my sun setting. So I'm going to kind of, I'm going to bring this down like this. I'm going to kind of go almost in a straight line but with maybe a couple of little soft bumps in through there and then I'm going to bring it back up with a couple of little roly-poly hills going up in through there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come about halfway between here and the bottom of my canvas. So somewhere in this vicinity works for me. I'm going to use my pencil. You could use your brush or something as a measuring tool to see how high you did it or you made that mark on this side. And then you just use your finger <laughs> to hold that utensil and give yourself a, a mark at about the same height. And this area I'm going to give kind of a more straight line going across nothing fancy in there at all and then we're going to be using our large brush for the next step so once you get this done you can put your pencil away take out your large brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the base coat for our sky our hills and our land i'm going to be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm going to use my medium brush to show you how to mix a custom color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a gradient of a dark blue 
on my sky from dark blue to light blue. Then I'm going to use dark blue as my base coat for my hills. And then I'll be using um, my dark blue to white in a reverse order on my land. So I have pre-mixed myself my custom dark blue color that I'm going for. So this is it right in through here. You can kind of see it when I thin it out in the on my palette to show you the color. How I got to that was mostly blue and then I used a tiny bit of black and a tiny bit of white. So what I'm in essence doing is I'm desaturating my ultramarine blue by adding gray paint to it. And I used the a little bit more black than white in order to get the the tonal value a little bit darker than my ultramarine blue so this is where I'm headed be very careful with the black because it can overpower and you can make this black really easily so just add a little bit of black at a time and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my large brush I'm going to start at the top of my sky with my dark blue color I'm just going to do a left to right type of brush stroke. I'm just going to be putting this on the top and then what I'm going to do is without washing my brush I'm going to pick up white paint and what's going to happen is my sky is going to get lighter and lighter as it comes down my canvas. Actually I think I want a little bit more blue in there so I just picked up a little bit more blue. Um, I do want it to go pretty darn light as it goes down towards that horizon but you don't need it to go all the way white you can certainly have it still a little light blue as it's coming down towards the horizon so this is where I'm going right now I just keep adding white to my brush I'm even bumping into my hills so as I do this process I don't necessarily want it to look like I'm painting around those hills so I like to bump into the the top edge of them with my paint so that way as I'm going through this process it will look like the sky is behind the hills as opposed to just being painted around the hills and I'm getting it to go nice and light down in this area because I know that I'm going to be having my sunset on here in a little while I do know that I'm going to be doing a second coat with sun um, set colors in a little while so I am not concerned about this looking perfect but I am going to just kind of uh, soften this up just a little bit with a real light pressure on my brush before I go move on to the hills so that looks pretty good to me so now what I'm going to do for the hills is I'm going to um, not wash my brush but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pick up my dark blue so I didn't wash my brush and I'm just going to paint in my hills with this dark blue color. I'm bringing it all the way up to the tippy top because I still have a little bit of the white on my brush the, and because I'm starting at the top of these hills, the top may end up being a little bit lighter than the bottom. So you don't have to um, worry about getting it a solid color. I am just using kind of the remnants on my brush with a little bit of that dark blue paint up at the top and then as I work my way down towards the bottom of the hill I'll be using a little bit more uh, paint on my brush. That looks pretty good. I just keep reloading right now with the dark blue color and again I'm going to do a second layer on these hills in a little while so I'm again not concerned about it looking perfect. I'm just looking to get a base coat on in order to start my building process of my landscape. And then once I've got this section done, I'm going to start at the bottom of the hill with my dirty brush with blue and white paint on it, or my dark blue and white paint. So I have about equal parts of dark blue and white on my brush. I'm starting at the bottom of my land and I'm going to go left to right and then as I work my way towards the top I'm going to be picking up white paint so it's going to get lighter and lighter as it goes towards the top of that land so I just picked up white and I on my dirty brush and I'm just going back and forth left to right I'm using these long um, pretty they're not super straight brush strokes but definitely a real long um, continual brush stroke in order to have this land look nice and soft, have a nice soft snow um, filled effect 
And then as I get up towards the land, I'm just gonna get these two to blend in with each other just a little bit. So I'm almost scrubbing or dry brushing uh, both of those two sections together. My hills are still a little wet, so they're blending in a little bit, which is fantastic. And then once I've got this done, I am going to be using the same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our sky. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm gonna use are white, yellow, orange, red, and my custom sky blue, the dark blue. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be putting my sun setting in this vicinity over in through here. I'm gonna have it with really soft, uh, kind of um, out of focus type of edges to it, and then it's gonna just beam sunset kind of colors throughout the sky, illuminating maybe some drifting clouds going by. You could really make your sunset as powerful as you want, as bright as you want, as subtle as you want. I'm just gonna show you a process to get the sun on in a nice bright way and to um, get those sunset colors on in a believable way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first start with a very little bit of white paint on my brush. This is gonna help me to establish where I want my sun to go. As you're doing this, if you bump into your land, it's okay, because the land would be illuminated by the sun, the glow of the sun anyways. So if you bump into that land, don't worry about it. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of establishing a bright area for my, for my sun to go, and then I'm just fading out this white color. So I will, as this dries, I'll keep coming back to the center and making it, you know, putting more layers of white on it to make it bright, bright. But right now I'm just kind of establishing where I want it to go. I also, if I have a lot of blue area in the sky and I wanna put yellows and oranges on top of it, my yellow and my oranges are gonna be transparent or translucent, which means you can see through them. So if I put yellow on top of a blue sky, I'm gonna end up with a green sky. So to avoid doing that, what I can do is I can take a little bit, a, a little bit more white and I can, in essence, kind of give myself these really light areas where I can put those bright sunset -y colors on top of it without making it go green. So this is just a trick. If you do want to have a, a lot of sunset colors on top of a blue type of a sky, if you can give them some of those areas this whiter or lighter base to work off of, that's gonna help those sunset colors kind of be more um, of a true color as opposed to taking on that blue that's underneath them. So I'm just adding these lighter areas. Perhaps you can uh, associate them with clouds going by or you know whatever other type of atmospheric information that you want to have in your sky. They don't have to be consistent, just something that's gonna allow you to ha put those sunset colors on top. So now that I've got that, I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of yellow paint and I'm gonna start the glow around my sun. So this is a very little bit of yellow paint and I'm giving myself that kind of circular type of glow around that sun. And then I can start layering this yellow into my sunset colors or my sunset area. And because I have the white behind it, it's now yellow and not green. I'm now gonna pick up a touch of my fluorescent orange without washing my brush. And this is gonna allow me to get some even more fascinating sunset colors in my sky. I'm gonna merge them close to that sun, so that's gonna allow that, that sun to really pop and look as vibrant as it can in those sunset colors. And you don't have to make this all the same. You can have, you know, if you love the yellow, use the yellow more, more than the, more than the um, orange. I'm now gonna pick up a tiny bit of red. And if, if you've noticed, I'm hardly having any paint on my brush at any time. I can certainly add more to the equation as I work my way through my colors, but I really like to use this dry brush type of a technique in order to control 
what I'm doing. If I pick up too much paint, I tend to get out of control, lose focus, lose my way on my canvas. So this just helps me to maintain some s sort of order in my painting. And now that I've got that, I feel like I want a little bit more intermingled with my um, with my blues. So I'm gonna pick up some of my sky blue right now, but I'm gonna be mindful that I have that on my brush so I will not go from that to my yellow. <laughs> so this is just one of those times where I feel like I wanted a little bit more darkness in some of this area over here. You can even, I just picked up a tiny bit of water on my brush to get this to just kind of soften out a little bit. Um, you can use a little bit of water or liquid medium to get your colors to kind of blend a little bit with each other if you're using this dry brush type of technique that I started with. The, um, a tiny touch of water on your brush will help those colors just merge a little bit more together. And that's looking pretty good to me. I'm digging how it's going nice and red over here and it's got some nice vibrancy on this left hand side. I'm gonna wash my brush now because I wanna hit that center of the sun one more time with some white and I'm, I'm afraid I have blue on my brush. So I just wash my brush. I just got a couple little drips over there I wanna take care of. So I just wash my brush and I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit more white. And again, just an itty bitty bit on the tip of my brush and this will allow me to illuminate that center of the sun as much as I want to. And if it's not bright enough for you, if you don't feel like your sun is white enough, the trick is just to add more contrast around it. So I just picked up a tiny bit of yellow and you, if you, the higher the contrast is around that bright center, the more that center is gonna pop out. So you can just keep tweaking these, these colors that are next to it and that will help that um, nucleus of the sun really pop out and be very evident in this sunset. And don't be afraid to go back and add additional colors. Like I just added a bit more yellow over in this area. Have fun with it. And then once you've got this done, we are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're going to finish our hills and our land. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are my dark blue, white, and maybe a little bit of my yellow and perhaps a touch of orange. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be illuminating the area where the sun would be shining down, maybe the valley in this hill, and then maybe a little bit on the land enter here. I'm going to have it darker on the edges, which we've already established that, and I'm going to put little highlights on the tips of these hills, and then same thing with the land. I'm going to put that lighter illuminated area from the sun, and then just make sure it's faded out enough for the land, for the rest of the land. I'm gonna start up in through here. I'm gonna be using my dark blue plus a little bit of white. And again, just very little bit on my brush at the same time. I wanna kind of establish the edges of my hills to um, the side of the sun. So I'm putting a little bit of my blue and white wherever you wanna uh, an edge to the hill to be is up to you. You don't need to do it exactly as I'm doing. I had a little bump in through here, so that's where it made sense for me to kind of put a little bit of a hill. I've got a little bump in through here, so I'm putting a little bit in through there. So my goal right now is just to kind of give lighter areas where the hills are facing the um, facing the sun. So I have just a little bit of my blue plus a touch of white on there now. And then as I come towards this center, I'm going to, where the sun is, I'm going to just bring more of this light color down in through here. So I'm almost kind of just scooping it kind of left and right. Give myself as if these hills kind of converged and there's a little valley in through here that's maybe just leading right to our, our snowman encounter in the middle of the, in the middle of the forest. And then what I'm going to do, I'm putting a little bit more white paint on my brush to get these edges just a little bit lighter as if there's some nice snow on those edges that's being illuminated by our sun. And then I'm just going to pick up on my dirty brush a little bit more of my dark blue and make sure that I have a second coat on all of the hills. So this way it forces me to make sure that I have 
it fully painted. Now I'm just picking up my dark blue, making sure that I've got a good transition from one hill to the other and that it's kind of a little bit lighter on the side where the sun is. And I'm not using a ton of paint at this point. I just picked up a little bit more of my dark blue. I'm really just looking to get a nice second coat. I don't really need a, a super special brush stroke. This whole area is going to be disguised by the evergreen trees that we're going to be putting on in a little while. So I just really want to make sure that I've got a nice background in there that the top uh, feeds into the sky as well as I want it to. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just pick up a little bit more of my dark blue, getting this bottom area to make sure that it converges with the light area. I had too much paint on my brush, so I just swiped it off and then just making sure that this blends in as well. I'm picking up a tiny bit more white just to get this to fully blend the way that I had envisioned it. There we go, that looks good in my opinion. And then I'm going to uh, move down to the land. So I want to do a similar process where it's pretty bright in through here. I am going to be illuminating it with a little bit of the yellow and the orange in a minute, but right now I just want to kind of um, finalize the intensity of it. So I just washed my brush. I'm picking up a little bit more white paint and I'm going to do it pretty darn bright right in through here. So this is just white paint at this point. I'm going to just bring this a little bit left to right. Maybe, maybe a little bit more up into this, um, the little hill area as if Maybe they, they can walk up that way or something. There's a little path to the sun. And then I'm going to just um, blend this out because I don't need it to go too much lighter uh, in, the, in the other areas of the, of the ground. So I'm just blending this out. And then as I get towards the um, bottom of the, the land, all I'm really going to do, I'm going to pick up uh, my dark blue and white just to make sure I have a second coat that looks nice and complete so I have my dark blue and my white. I don't want this bottom area to go as dark as those hills so that's why I use both colors at the same time. And then you can use a swirling type of technique. You can use a left to right. I'm just looking to put another thin coat on here and make sure that it looks like it's nice and, and complete and not um, and that I didn't miss any spots. So that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put some little twinkle highlights on the snow from the sun. So I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm going to put a tiny bit, I feel like I want a little bit more white right where it's meeting the sun. So I put a little bit more white on my brush. I'm going to put some little real bright twinkle highlights on the snow in through here along these edges like this maybe a little bit kind of coming up in through there and then I'm going to um, pick up or wipe my brush off I'm going to pick up a teeny tiny bit of yellow paint and when I say teeny tiny bit I mean teeny tiny bit I even just wiped it off on my paper towel and I can incorporate just these little tiny bits of yellow twinkles within the snow I'm not doing much at all I don't want this to read as super duper yellow I just want it to look like the Sun is glowing on some of this snow I can even put a tiny bit down in through here I am going to pick up some of my orange too because I don't want my snow to to read as yellow snow so so I'm going to wipe my brush off and I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of my orange again just itty bitty bit and just put a couple of little tiny twinkles of the um, the sunset colors because the snow can be reflective so me incorporating these little bits of the sunset colors in my snow will make that snow look a little bit more believable and reflective. So those are just little tricks. You don't have to do much. Does an itty bitty bit in there. You could even put a little bit up in through here. And then we are going to be using our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your snow done, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat for our trees. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The color I'm gonna use is black paint. So I am going to have a bunch in my um, foreground, which is gonna be really close to the viewer. 
they're going to be, I'm going to have a huge one on the right side, a, a big one on the left side, and then some small ones that we're just going to see the tops of them down at the bottom of my canvas. And then I'm going to have two that are within the land that my snowman is going to be um, in. So for me, I tend to um, get excited when I paint <laughs> and I lose focus as to what my original mission was going to be. So I like to make my markers in order to say, this is what you want to do in the start of this step and hopefully you'll be there at the end. So I'm going to make tree markers or commonly known as tree trunks to start the process of where I want all of my trees. So what I did was I put black paint on my brush and because I'm using a big bristle brush, sometimes the bristles tend to splay out on you. So what I like to do is I just take and I kind of squish it in my paint on the side of my palette and that'll bring my bristles together so I can kind of um, plan out my attack. So I'm gonna have a really tall one on the right hand side this one, I'm actually going to have the top of it kind of curved a little bit, so I'm going to take it and I'm just going to bring it down all the way down to the bottom of my canvas like that. Then my next one, I'm going to have, I would say, uh, if this is about halfway in my canvas, I'm a couple inches over to the right hand side. So this one, I'm just going to kind of come straight down like this. And you can see it doesn't need to be a skinny line. I'm just doing something that is going to give me an idea of where I want it to go. I'm going to have this one coming about halfway into my ground, something like that. And then I'm going to have another one that's going to be right next to it and it's going to sit a little bit behind it. So I'm going to have this one a little bit shorter and this one is going to stop somewhere a little bit shorter than that one. I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a big one on this side. So I am maybe about two inches above my uh, sun, and this tree is a little bit shorter than this tree. I'm going to start this somewhere in this vicinity, and this one's just going to go down to the bottom of my canvas. I'm going to have another little one to the right of this one. It's going to be right here. It's going to go down to the bottom of my canvas. And then I'm just going to have a bunch of like little bush type um, things down at the bottom in through here. So nothing major down at the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my big tree over on this right hand side. I'm having these at looking like evergreen type pine trees which are typically in a generic shape of a triangle so I'm going to have mine more narrow at the top and they're going to get larger as they come down towards the bottom. I love using these bristle brushes because I can kind of give these fun um, little downward type of branches as they're coming out. You don't have to make every single one exactly the same. Right now I'm just kind of doing a exterior type of a profile for my tree and then I'm just going to dot the inside of it because I know that I'm going to have a lot of um, snow and stuff like that covering the interior edges of my tree so I don't need to um, really do much of a profile at all. I'm going to do a little bit over on this right hand side and then it's just going to go off the canvas. So now that I've got that, I can just dot the inside with black paint because we're going to, we'll be creating the illusion of branches and things of that nature with different colors on a future step. So this is just providing us with the base coat to work from. And because we're, I'm choosing to use a nice dark base coat, this is gonna put these trees almost in a silhouetted type of look because the sun is on the other side of them. So it's a great way to add that, um, that silhouetted type of illusion by starting with the, this black color and then you can enhance um, it after that. So this one is going to be in front of this one over here. You, I'm going to do my back one first, so that way I kind of have an I, I It'll, in my head, be easier to do the back one first. So I'm just going to take this and kind of come down along these edges. And again, it doesn't have to be, you know, exactly the same on both sides. This one, I'm just probably going to see a little bit of the top of it. The rest of it's going to be underneath the neighboring tree. So I don't have to really worry too much about that. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this one over here. And again, the inherent thing to these is that they look like triangles, so they're pointy at the top. So as I'm doing this, I'm really concentrating on keeping that top pretty darn pointy. And I know that there's a lot of snow on these trees that we're going to be putting, so I'm weighting these branches down, so that's why they're going in a downward motion. So something like that. And then this left-hand side is going to end up um, 
crossing over the, um, the tree that it's next to. So once I get to that point, I just kind of dot over it as if it's not even there, <laughs> as if the back tree's not even there. And when we go to do the other colors, we'll be able to get this, this front tree to pop out in front of the other tree. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do these trees on the left-hand side, and then I'll do the little bushes at the bottom. So again, and I'm using the, the narrow side of my brush. As you're doing yours, if, if this brush doesn't work out great for you, you could, I, do, I use fan brushes sometimes to do this step. You could use um, a smaller brush if you want to. Really, wherever your comfort zone is, there's so many different ways to do different type of effects in painting. It's really a matter of finding what tool is going to work best for you. And for me, when I'm doing these style trees, I love my bristle brushes because they give a real nice organic type of edges to the to the pine needle branches and things of that nature. So that's where my comfort zone is, but you again could certainly modify it to whatever you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and do this little guy in through here. And again, these two will probably overlap a little bit at the bottom. And I keep just kind of squishing my brush um, in my paint. And if you find that you can't get your, your brush, you know, flat like that, it probably just means that you have too much paint within the bristles. So again, you can just take it and really kind of squish out some of that paint that's within those inner bristles, and that'll get you to be able to squish it back together. I'm gonna move my canvas a little bit here so I can reach the bottom. And these bottom ones, I'm kind of thinking that they're maybe the tip tops of trees or bushes. You can, you know, have fun with being carefree with the type of, um, way that you want them to look. I'm just giving myself uh, as if we're kind of looking down into this little forest with um, this cute little snowman meeting of sorts. <laughs> and then once you've got this done, we are going to use the same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're going to be finishing our trees. I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are dark blue, white, yellow, and orange. And if I use, I might uh, use a little black too if I need to, but that's only in case of an emergency. <laughs> so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be putting the snow on my trees. They are pretty silhouetted, which means there's a lot of the dark side that we are seeing because the sun is low and on that side of them. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be adding some really dark snow on the back side, which ironically is going to be my dark blue color that I used for my sky. We've used it in the hills, we used it on the ground, we used it in the sky. So again, this is gonna bring a nice harmony to the color palette on the painting. I'm gonna bring a lot of that snow into the back side of the trees, and then I'll be illuminating or putting lighter snow on the side that is turned towards the tree. And then these two little guys, since they're really close to the sun, I'm gonna actually put some of those sunset colors, the yellow and the orange, as if it's glowing or reflecting on the tree. So I'm gonna start with my dark blue color, and I'm gonna approach this very similar lead to how I did the first one, only this time I'm thinking more distinct kind of branches throughout the tree. So I've got my dark blue on here and I'm going to be adding my snow kind of in a downward type of uh, brush stroke, which is gonna create these the illusion of branches. But I don't just wanna go down to the left and down to the right, because that's gonna make it look like we're just parting it down the middle. What I'll also do is when I get to the center of the tree, I'll also do some that are kind of coming in a downward type of direction. That's gonna make it look like the branches are coming at, at the viewer as well. And then I'm just gonna kind of do that throughout the whole tree. And it doesn't have to be symmetrical. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just, uh, giving you the illusion of the of the the, sh the snow being on the shadowed side of the tree. As you get in this region where the the color on your brush is the same color as that background, 
you can still put some on the tree. I think I accidentally picked up a little white there. You can still put some on the tree, but we're going to put a little highlight there in a minute as well um, with a touch more white. So again, just some of my dark blue is on my brush, giving myself the illusion of some snow piled up on these tree branches. And I'm going to do this to all the trees, and then we'll come back and put some highlight on them um, with with white included. So this tree in through here, this one right here is in front of this one. I'm actually gonna do this one first so you can um, see where the edge of it is and then we'll, when we get to the back tree, we'll um, do a little bit less where they meet. So right now I'm just kind of going down the left hand side of this tree and you can see how it is magically coming in front of the other one. I'm just reloading my brush here with my dark blue. I'm going to go down this right hand side and you don't have to do it really systematic on every single branch that you did the first go around. This is, you know, meant to just look like snow sitting on some branches. So again, it doesn't have to be everything perfectly symmetrical. So when I get to this one over here, I keep picking up a little bit of white on my brush. Not that that's a bad thing, but <laughs> when I'm teaching to just use the dark blue, I should just have dark blue on my brush. So I'm going to go down this left hand side like this. And then where I get, when it gets close to this one over here, I'm just going to leave a little bit of that black um, separating the two trees so that way you can really distinctly see the difference between the two. I'm going to put a little bit of this dark blue on these guys in through here and again not a whole heck of a lot just something that's going to allow the viewer to understand that we've got a little bit of snow piled up on these. You can even like leave the bottoms of them a little bit darker as if they're a little bit more in the shadows going down this one in through here doing a little bit down that middle and then I've got this final one over in through here and I always when I'm doing these really try and make sure that I've got some snow at the top of the tree because I feel like that's where the snow would sit and rest first so as you're doing yours don't forget to put a little snow at the top of that tree so now that I've got that on in through there, going down or getting some on this left hand side of the tree, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start picking up my dark blue plus a tiny bit of white paint. So I've got dark blue plus a tiny bit of white paint and this is where I'm going to illuminate the, um, the snow on the side that faces the, um, that faces the sun. So I've got a little bit of the um, dark blue and I'm, a, I'm afraid I have too much white so I'm just going to tap it on my paper towel. I can always add more. It's just tough to reverse when you've you know worked so hard at getting all this nice detail on this. So I'd always err on the side of caution. So dark blue plus a tiny bit of white paint is going to give me just a little bit of extra brightness on this left hand side of the tree and you don't just want it to be on the left hand side so once I get it on that left hand side what I can do I'm wiping my brush off and I'm picking up more of my dark blue just to make sure that I've got a good transition from the dark to the light so that way I've got it almost as a gradient from light on the left to dark on the right. And then if I needed to, if I did anything too much, I could certainly pick up a touch of black and, you know, reverse any of that. But I'm thinking that that's pretty good for that tree. And then I'm going to move on to, to my next tree. So a uh, little bit of white plus my dark blue. These two, you can be a little bit more aggressive with the white because these are closer to the um, light source. So I'm going to add just a little bit more of my white on the edges of these ones. This is looking good. <laughs> I like it when it all comes together for me. And then I'm just going to kind of fade it out into this dark side. So you could even just let yourself kind of run out of paint as you're going over on that right hand side or you could pick up your dark blue, whatever, again, is most comfortable for you. So I just reloaded with a little bit more white to get the brightness on this left-hand side of this tree in through here, and then just kind of let it fade out towards the right-hand side. And again, anything goes wrong, you can reverse it with a little bit of black or your dark blue, but I'm thinking that that's looking pretty good for my painterly eye. Maybe just a touch more white on the edges of these little guys because I know that they're going to be my 
my star of my bright show. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the same thing for this guy over in through here. So this one, maybe I'll put a little extra brightness at the top, and then as I'm going down towards the, um, down further, maybe we'll get it a little bit darker as it goes down further. So maybe this is just telling the viewer it's a little bit further away from the light source and just getting this to fade out towards the darker side over here. And then we're gonna get this little guy in through here a little bit. These ones as they're right below the sun could have kind of a highlight on both sides of them because or just on the tops of them because that's where the light source is. So wherever that light source is that's where the brightest part of those bushes or the trees is going to be. The snow on them is going to be. So just putting little bits on the edges of these guys and then we're going to oh I want to I'm going to wash and dry my brush so I can put a little um, highlight on the, I want this to kind of come out a little bit further. We're gonna put a little high, a little bit more dark blue on my brush. We're gonna put a little um, sparkle highlight on these two trees right here. Let me just kind of fill in this little gap. There we go, that, that looks good to me. So I am going to uh, wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put a little bit of that yellow and orange twinkling on my tree and maybe on that snow below it if I feel the need to. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of the yellow on my brush. And again, I'm just going to kind of put a nice glow on some of my snow. Again, in my head, I'm thinking this is the, um, the sun is reflecting its glow on the edge of this snow. So you could make yours really vibrant. Maybe you turn yours into sparkly lights on your trees. You don't have to go the reflective quality like I'm going, maybe you re are reading yours as little lights on your trees, but if you're doing lights, you should probably do them all the way around. I'm thinking mine is the reflection, so of, uh, you know, of the, the sunset color, so I'm going to do it more towards the side of the sun. I just picked up some orange, and I'm going to just put a little bit of that in here, and I'm not going to go too heavy, just little twinkles here and there. I'm actually going to wipe my brush off so I can blend this out just a smudge and then just kind of softly tap it in so it's not too, too much. And then you can just fiddle with it after this. So if it's too bright, just add a little white. I just took a tiny bit of white paint and you can intermingle it with those highlighted areas. And then we're gonna be using our pencil for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your large brush away, take out your pencil and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for our snowman and it's hugger, <laughs> or, or the person it's hugging. <laughs> Could be a boy or a girl or a lady or a man, whatever you'd like. Maybe it's hugging another snowman. So our figures, that's a good thing. I'm drawing an outline for our figures. I'm gonna be using my pencil. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that you would like. Uh, I'm gonna guide you through my outline of a snowman and a, and a child, but you, again, could modify yours whatever way you'd like. I'm gonna have mine a little to the right of my son, and it's gonna occupy about this much space on my canvas. So about halfway down my land is gonna be the bottom of my snowman, and the top of my snowman is gonna be almost at the um, top of my hill. I'm gonna start with my generic snowman shape, which is gonna be three circles. Oh, that's not gonna show up very well. I've got a white pencil too, so you guys can see the top part of my snowman. I got a circle in through here. I've got the mid section circle in through here. We're gonna use regular pencil for the bottom half. <laughs> there we go. There's a mid section circle and then the bottom one. When I get to the bottom part of the snowman, instead of doing a full circle, I'm going to kind of flatten the bottom part of the, um, of the circle. So that way it looks like it's kind of set into the snow or melted into the snow a little bit. I'm gonna put a little hat on. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna tip my hat down a little bit as if the head of the snowman is tilted a little bit towards the person that it's hugging. I'm just gonna kind of put a little top hat part on like that. And then for my, my hugger, <laughs> I'm gonna have the um, head gonna lean right into the snowman. So I'm gonna put another little circle right in the crook of the neck like this. So I'm gonna put a circle 
um, right in through here, or like an oval type of a shape, something like that will work. And then I'm going to put a jacket on my little person. So my jacket, I'm going to have the bottom of it coming a little bit past this um, part of the snowman. So somewhere in through here is about where the bottom of my jacket is. Now I'm picturing this person to kind of be leaning over a little bit into the snowman. So I'm going to have the, the jacket kind of coming at an angle down at this bottom part. I'm going to have a little, um, the arm is going to come up into my snowman. Time to use my white pencil so you can see it. Into the snowman like this. You don't really need to do a, a super tricky sketch at this point. It's just something that's going to give you uh, an outline to go by. I'm putting a little hood on my jacket, so I'm just going to put a little bump out right in through there. And then I've got my legs, so I'm going to have my legs kind of just coming right next to my snowman, maybe with a little puffy bottom like there's snow pants, and then a little boot or something down at the bottom in through there. Maybe the pants come all the way down. My pants always touch the ground, so we'll make this person's pants touch the ground too. And that's all I'm going to do for my um, outline. I'm actually going to be using my medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your outline done, you can certainly do any little modifications. I got a little glove on or mitten on in through there. You can do any modifications you want. And then we're going to use our medium brush for the next step. So you can just get it out and get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the body of our snowman and the shadows of the snowman and the person on the ground. So the body of the snowman is going to be the three balls. We'll do all the face and the hat and the clothing and stuff on a future step. This is just going to be the snow aspects. I'm going to use my medium brush. The colors I'm going to use are my dark blue, white, and black. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be creating a dark side of my snowman over here on the right hand side with my dark blue. And then I'm going to fade it over into a lighter side over here on the left side. If during this process you bump into the person's arm or you bump into the head, don't worry about it. We've got a future step that is going to um, finalize those anyways. And then we'll be coming down and we're going to put a shadow on the ground. I'm going to start with my dark blue color and during this process I'm going to be using a dotting or a stippling technique. So I'm going to be dotting the paint like this, just going kind of straight into the canvas. I'm going to go along this left hand side and I'm going to bring it in about halfway between the, between the snow balls. <laughs> so I'm going to bring this up and in through here. I'm going to bring it about halfway in and I don't need it to have very firm edges so I'm just kind of softening it out a little bit. Uh, I'm going to put some underneath the hat. So I've got my hat in through here so I've got my dark color over here on the right hand side. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start picking up white paint on my dirty brush. So I have my dark blue and I started picking up some white paint and I'm going to work my way over towards that left hand side. So what this is doing is it's creating dimension on my snowman. It's giving the snowman a darker or a shadowed side over on the right hand side because that's the side that's opposite the sun. And if you need to pick up more paint, feel free to do so. I'm getting away with just kind of dotting in what I have in my brush, but now I need to reload. <laughs> so I just reloaded with some white paint on my dirty brush so I know that I'm still going to have some of that dark blue that is intermingling. And then as I'm coming over even further to this left hand side, I keep picking up white paint. So I will eventually get just about all the way white as I go over to that left hand side and it's going to make it look like it's got great contrast. I don't have much of that white side of the snowman that is um, next to white snow except for maybe this little tiny spot in through there. So if you can't see the edge of your snowman in through there you could certainly add a touch of darkness but I think that this is working out just fine for me so I'm just um, dotting that white paint back into the dark side, making sure that all my pencil marks 
are well hidden. That's looking pretty good. And I'm picking up a little bit more of my dark blue just so I see some of my background through this section and through here. So I just wanted to make sure I had good coverage. And I'm going to have a snowman arm and I'm going to have, um, you know, other things on here that will help to add more information. Now I'm going to pick up a teeny tiny bit of black paint to give myself an extra little shadow underneath that hat. So I just picked up a tiny bit of black paint to add a little extra shadow underneath there. I'm also putting a little shadow at the bottom of my snowman down in through here just so I can have that extra bit of dimension on and contrast down at the bottom side. You can put a tiny bit in through there too if you feel it would behoove you. And then what I'm going to do is I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel. I'm going to pick up a teeny bit more black paint and I'm going to give a shadow underneath here. My shadow of my snowman is going to be in the direction of the sun. So if I were to draw kind of a diagonal line from my, my snowman to my shadow or where my shadow comes out, that's kind of the direction I pull that shadow in. So I have black, very little bit of black paint on my brush right now and I'm going to be using a left to right type of brush stroke in a minute. Right now I'm picking up some of my dark blue and wiping it off on my paper towel so my shadow gets a little bit uh, more subtle as I'm coming back. I'm picking up dark blue plus white now as I'm going down into the um, the shrubs. So I'm just kind of going back and forth, left to right. I'm picking up more of my dark blue. <laughs> I want it a little bit darker than that, maybe a little bit wider around this base to make it look like we've got there we go. There's my snowman shape. I didn't want to lose my snowman shape. And all the shadow should be is something darker than your, than your colored snow. I'm putting it a little bit blacker right as it meets the um, snowman. So it looks like there's a real good um, dark shadow and the sun is really powerful, but it's a long shadow because the sun is so low. I'm going to do the same thing with my little person right now too because I'm going to use this same brush. I have black paint on my brush and m this shadow would be more narrow than my snowman because this is a more narrow person <laughs> than my snowman. It's going to come right near my snowman and it should probably touch my snowman at some point because they are hugging. So I'm going to bring, I'm wiping my brush off because I have too much paint on there right now and I'm going to pick up some of my dark blue so I can get this shadow to touch in through here a little bit. There we go. And then just hide behind that, that bush. And then we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So fiddle with this as much as you want. Then you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting the base coat for the hats, the jacket, the pants, and the boot. So the clothing, I guess, of sorts. <laughs> I'm going to be using my small brush. The colors that I'm going to use are black and red. I'm going to use my small brush. I'm going to start with my hats. So I've got my, my uh, snowman hat, kind of like just a little basic top hat. You could, of course, make yours into whatever style you want it. You could make yours into like a cowboy hat or a cute little like knitted hat. Whatever is speaking to you is is up to you. It's your it's your magical snowman encounter. You can make it whatever you want. Just what I'm doing is I'm trying to make sure that the top part or the the part of the hat that meets the sn the snow head fits. So if, if it's too narrow where it meets this part of the head, it might not look like it fits. So I'm making mine big enough so it fits that part. Then when I go to do my little person's hat in through here, so again, just doing kind of an oval type of a shape that's leaning towards my snowman. I've got it kind of overlapping my snowman a little bit. I'm even going to put a little pom-pom on the top of the hat so it looks like every winter hat that I had as a kid. <laughs> That's what happens when your mom and your aunt knit. You get lots of pom-poms on the tops of your hats as a little girl. I'm also going to be using black as my base coat for my snow pants. So I'm just again 
I'm using a, a basic color palette for these objects. You could certainly fancy it up and make any color combination that you want. If you had a favorite pair of blue snow pants or, or your kid or your grandkid wears purple polka dotted snow pants, do whatever, whatever works for you. I'm just doing some dark black ones. Um, of course, they're going to touch the ground because again, I'm short and all of my pants tend to touch the ground. And then I'll put a little boot toe part coming out the front of it. And then I'm going to wash my brush so I can put my, um, my jacket color on. So I'm going to do red for my jacket color. Again, feel free to do yours, whatever color you'd like. I do have a little hooded part in through here. So I'm just popping that out a little bit. I've got this part kind of coming down, making sure that it's going past the pants a little bit. So it looks like it's maybe overlapping them a little bit. And then in through here, just kind of bringing this down. And if you add a little bit of movement, so it's not just a straight line, that, that helps to make it look a little bit more realistic. I've got a little arm coming out from the shoulder in through here to make sure that a nice big hug is happening. I think I need to close this off a little bit in through here. Yeah, that looks better. Um, and then just bringing this and for me my red is transparent or translucent which means I'm gonna see my pencil underneath it I'm okay with that because we're gonna come back and do another layer I've got a little sleeve here and a little mitten hand in through here you could certainly put a little thumb on there if you wanted to or not whatever works for you is totally fine by me I think I'm gonna Does that look good yeah that looks alright <laughs> <laughs> debating whether or not to put a thumb on there. Then I'm just going to color this part in and maybe a little collar in through there and then just bring this right up to where that hat is. I'll put a little shading in the back of this hoodie part so it looks a little bit more realistic. And then we're going to use this same small brush for the next step. So once you've got your base coat on here, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our person and our snowman with all of the little details. So this is gonna be finishing the clothing with highlights and shadows, same thing with the hat. We're gonna put a little face on our snowman. We're gonna put a little arm on our snowman so it's hugging, it's reciprocating in the hug session. <laughs> and then I might kind of fluff up a little bit of snow around the feet and the bottom of the snowman as well, just to give them a little bit more texture down there. So I'm gonna first start by doing the hats. So I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black and white paint on my small brush. I'm gonna be using a bunch of colors. I'm gonna use black, white, red, um, orange. Well, that might be it. <laughs> black, white, red, and orange. So for my hat in through here, I'm just gonna add a little bit of highlight uh, I have black and white on my brush. I'm gonna add a little highlight on my rim of my hat in through here. I don't necessarily want it to go all the way white because it is on the dark side of the hat, but I do, I like the idea of having it have a little bit of dimension to it. Again, I just picked up a little bit of black and white. So I go from this left edge and then just kind of pull it back a little bit. You can even put a little kind of topper part on it. So just a little bit of that gray helps to give you a little bit of dimension on it. Picked up a little bit more white. Maybe there's a little bright edge to that top in through there. That looks pretty good. Then I'm going to do um, the same thing with black and white for her pants. So again, I just have black and white on my brush. I just really want to give a little bit of maybe um, movement in the pants. So I'm just kind of bringing down a couple of little wrinkles perhaps maybe a little bit more white right where it kind of is illuminated from the other side from the sun, but I don't need to do much when it comes to um, finishing a detail like this. I just, for me, I like that realistic type of look. So I do tend to incorporate little bits of highlights and shadows almost everywhere in order to show little sparks of detail. So that, you know, maybe the cuff of the pants, maybe the little bit of the top of the shoe, but you know, nothing major, just something that gives you that little, that little aspect. I'm going to wash and dry my brush now and I'm going to do her coat. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of red and black on my brush. Very little bit of black. The black can easily take over. I just need it for a shadow 
shadow underneath my hood and inside my hood. So I have black and red and I'm going to just kind of underline where I want my, my hood to go. And then I can just kind of blend this down into the back side of the jacket. So this is going to give me the, the dark side of the jacket. But because I started up right underneath the hood, that's where it's going to be the blackest. And as I work my way down the jacket, I can keep picking up red. I just without washing my brush, I keep picking up red. And this is one, it's filling in any unpainted spots, but it's also transitioning that really dark area up there into a bit of a lighter area down and through here. So it's a great way to create a nice easy gradient of sorts. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit more black um, and red in order to get the little shadow inside the hoodie. So I got black and red. I'm just going to kind of put a little little shadowy part in through here to show that maybe, you know, it's a hood that she's not or this person's not wearing. I just picked up more red just to make sure that this part is fully colored in and then I'm going to just make sure my arm is has a good second coat. I'm picking up a tiny bit more black to give myself a little shadow underneath this mitten. So a little shadow underneath there, a little shadow at the bottom side of the arm in through here. And again, I'm hardly doing anything. I'm really, my main goal is just to put an, a second coat of paint on these objects. And if I can get a little extra dimension in there, awesome. If not, I've just, you know, done my goal of making sure that they're fully painted in. I want the hat to look like it's a dark, like it's red, but it's in the dark. So I'm actually putting red as my highlight for my hat. So I just picked up some red paint. I'm putting a little red pom-pom on here. And then I'm going to put a little red kind of highlight over here on the left hand side. You could certainly, again, make yours any color that you want. I just felt I wanted it to look kind of red, but not as red as the jacket. So I approached it in this manner. And then I'm going to um, wash and dry my brush. I think that that's looking pretty good. If you felt you needed any little adjustments there, feel free to do so. I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I am going to put on my eyes and my arm. I'm going to put on my face. So wash and dry my brush. I'm picking up a tiny bit of black paint with a little bit of water on my brush. So I have very little bit of paint on my brush with water within the bristles so I can get these tiny little lines. I'm going to have my face um, on the left hand side. I'm going to put my little mouth is going to come somewhere in, let's see, in this vicinity. So I got my little mouth in through there. I'm going to put a couple of cute eyes. I'm going to put like a downward curve to give like a little cute cheek look to it. Like it's a happy snowman. And then I put the eye portion on top of it, like a little crescent. I'll put the other one in in this direction over here. Just a cute little, those little downward crescents underneath the eyes make the make the snowman look like he's really smiling. <laughs> I'm going to put a, um, a little orange carrot nose. So I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm picking up a tiny bit of orange paint. I'm going to put a little tiny um, nose in through here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, pick up some red and white, which will make pink. So I'm going for a, a little tiny rosy color in my cheeks. So a teeny tiny bit of red and white is going to give me this little rosiness in my cheeks. You, this is obviously not necessary to do, but if you want to incorporate just a little extra something special, like a little rosiness, that's a cute way to do it. Um, and now I'm picking up a tiny bit of white paint to give a little sparkle in my in my snowman eyes. So a little sparkle in my snowman eyes. And of course you could put snow on the nose. You could put any any little things that you want to adjust the cuteness factor of your of your snowman that looks adorable. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit more white paint to I feel like I want to have a little bit of fluffy snow like around these feet and stuff. So I just picked up a little bit of white paint to kind of amp up that area a little bit and then I got to put my arm on my snowman. Yeah, I definitely 
this little bit of white snow helps me out. <laughs> I'm gonna put um, a tiny bit of black paint on my brush now and give my snowman an arm. So I want this, the arm to kind of be holding on to my little person. So I gotta plan this out. We've got, the arm is gonna kind of come down like this. My elbow, I'm gonna have somewhere in through here. And then I'm gonna have the other part kicking up we got a little snowman hand like this, and then he's got his his little branch hand holding on to his friend here. Oh, that looks cute. That works. So now I'm gonna I'm just gonna finesse it with a little bit more black paint, and then I'm going to oh, so cute. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of white paint on my dirty brush just to give myself a little highlight on this arm, a little highlight on the on the branch hand. And then if you felt that you wanted to um, put a little bit of snow where the arm comes out, I just picked up a tiny bit more white and I'm just dabbing it on here. So it looks like that branch is popping out of the, out of the snowball. And then you just fiddle with it as much as you want. I think I'm, I, I don't know, I feel like I'm done. <laughs> I might fiddle with it a couple more minutes, but we're gonna be using this same small brush for the next step. So once you've got your cute snowman and person done, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically assign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush I think I'm going bottom left on this one, and I'm going black paint. I'm gonna put it right in this snow right here. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name, or the date, or a symbol, or whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is up to you because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you'd like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very sweet winter image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.